Hi everyone, I'm Sandy and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I have my August reading wrap up. I'm very excited to talk about the books I haven't talked about yet uh, and kind of give an update on what I ended up reading while I was out camping. Did I actually meet my full TBR, which only had six books on it? Um, yeah, we'll go through all of that. So <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into the book. So the books that were on my TBR, the first one was... A Suitable Boy by Vikram Seth. I did finish this one and I have already talked about it in a video. This is one of the biggest books on the 1001 Book Countdown. I did like it quite a bit, um, but if you wanna see more detailed information of what I could remember, uh, definitely go check out the video for this one. Uh, and then uh, the other book that I finished was the Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. And this book is in the same video as A Suitable Boy. Um, and this one, I didn't like as much. So those were two that were on the 1001 Book Countdown that I did finish. I also finished on the Road by Jack Kerouac, but I just finished it on the 31st. I haven't talked about it yet, but it will be in my next 1001 Book Countdown video. Uh, very small book. Uh, I don't even want to talk about it because I'm going to wait until the 1001 book countdown. So yeah, On the Road by Jack Kerouac. Uh, as far as what else was on my my reading list, I had um, you know the goal of every month selecting a new release to read. And this month it was Lessons in Chemistry. Sadly, I didn't get to it. I tried. I opened it. I read four pages, five pages, kept putting it down and then kept having to move on to other things. And then I went camping and I did not want to take this bigger hardback with me. And so sadly, I haven't made it to this one. Maybe I'll pick it up in the coming months, but this one unfortunately was a big no. Didn't finish it. Um, the other book, other goal that I have is to read a nonfiction every month. And for this month, I had selected Fuzz by Mary Roach. And I'm happy to say I did actually read this. I read part of it before I went camping and part of it when I got home from camping. And what I will say about this particular book is that Mary Roach has a really lovely writing style. I enjoy the individual sections quite a bit. Uh, there's a lot of humor in this book. There's a lot of information in this book. Uh, but the ultimate thing is the book ended up not working for me as well. And the reason for that is that the, every chapter is a new topic. And I just did not get the deep dive into a lot of the topics that I wanted. And at the end, there was no summary or conclusion. You end on really just another animal and not go back and kind of wrap everything together and kind of correlate everything together. And for me, that was part of the part of this book that I just didn't enjoy as much. This is a lovely cover on this book. I love the animal in the garbage can. Uh, there, like I said, some very funny pieces. It does talk a lot about how nature um, becomes a custom, acclimatized almost to being around people and don't see them as a threat, which causes more problems, which is really interesting. One of the things that I do know is like when we go out camping, when we go out hiking, uh, the idea is to always leave no trace. We try and impact the animals as little as possible while we're out. Uh, but yeah, it is interesting. Um, we did see a deer this year camping, which is really the first year that that has ever happened. Um, and apparently there was also a mountain lion up at one of the other campsites, not too far from us. And there were some things in this that I did like take note of because I had read that section before I left. Um, like you're supposed to make yourself big. Like what would you do if you were encountering a mountain lion? You know, it's a little scary when you have two little dogs with you, some of those things. But overall, I wish I had a more in-depth picture of some of the different animals and interactions. You know, I read this right after reading The Soul of an Octopus where I had such a big deep dive into you into that animal that this one was just missing some stuff for me. But Fuzz by Mary Roach, I did end up reading it. Yay! Uh, the other book that I have was a read-along that was hosted by A.G. Dunn from A.G. Dunn Reads and Writes. They were hosting a read-along of their favorite book, and it happens to be one of mine as well, which is Where the Red Fern Grows by Wilson Rawls. You can see that this book is a little beat up now uh, because it did go camping. I did take it with me, and I did successfully read it while camping, and it's everything that I remembered it to be. Uh, the story of Billy with his two dogs and 
and you all he goes through to get them and all of the things that he's able to accomplish with these dogs this love that he has for these dogs is absolutely amazing there's a lot of hunting references in it there's some very dark moments in it uh, and it definitely made me cry again <laughs> so my friend Jean also ended up reading this book while we were out camping and I was sitting at the picnic table and she was in one of the chairs and I kept turning around and I kept watching her face get sadder and sadder and sadder I ended up having to bring her a tissue because she was getting so sad at the end of this book I get teary-eyed even now thinking about the end of this book and thinking about her being sad about reading this book um, but yeah it just so much of this is just heartwarming and it's just I really love some of the just the innocence that Billy has in the beginning and just everything that he goes through and one of my favorite older characters is in this book which is the grandpa I think he's amazing <laughs> I really like grandpa quite a bit though grandpa gets him in trouble true very true grandpa is an instigator as well and has gotten bill did get billy into some some pickles in this particular book but i did successfully read where the red fern grows and um that's actually all the books that were on my tbr because i only had six i can count six <laughs> on my tbr this month but i did end up reading a few other books which is pretty amazing was i reading you know the book i should have been reading which is lessons in chemistry no i read some other stuff but while i was out camping i do have a picture of me in the hammock with the dog with this book on my on my lap which i'll put up now for you so proof i was reading this while out camping i did successfully read it the whole way through and it is the magicians by lev grossman this is the first first book in a trilogy and follows a character whose name I'm now forgetting, Quentin Coldwater, who uh, is convinced that the magical land of Fillory exists or wants it to be. And he gets an opportunity to go and study at a magical college instead of going to a real college, uh, a real college. I mean, a uh, I guess muggle if you're using the Harry Potter <laughs> terminology that's not used in this book um, and so the magicians follows him and his classmates as they're going through the different kinds of trials from everything from the exams all the way up to kind of like some searching for some other some other items I don't want to spoil it if this is a book that you want to read uh, sadly I was disappointed uh, and I know someone in my comments had said something that they didn't enjoy this book as well uh, I can see why I was expecting from the back I guess to be a little bit more innocent <laughs> uh, the age group kind of in the Harry Potter vein you know kids going away to a magical school and things like that but this is actually set with kids in college and so it is a very different age group than kind of like younger children learning how to do uh, spells or anything like that and so that part of it for me was just always a bit shocking when I came across it I also didn't particularly like Quentin uh, as a character I didn't like kind of his personality and how he came across and how just unable to be pleased he could not be he was never just really happy and some of the things that happened to some of the characters in the book were just kind of like okay really all right and so there's also a weird amount of sex in this book not explicit but referenced and so for me that was also something that was just a bit off-putting that I wasn't quite expecting um, overall you know, it was good it was okay uh, it wasn't good it was okay am I going to keep reading uh, the other two in the series the answer to that is no I, I'm not interested in it enough and then after I read it I think I kind of turned my friend Jean off on reading this while we were camping because I just I was like eh, I don't know it's not good enough for me to say "Ooh, read this book it wasn't that so uh, I think this may actually also end up in an unhaul coming up because I don't see myself rereading it I don't feel the need to have it on my shelf I guess that kind of speaks volumes if I it's not good enough for me to want to keep and I have plenty of room right now and I still don't want to keep it so yeah the magicians that was one and then the other ones that I ended up reading unexpectedly I actually bought the or one of these was a free kind of a free book the series is actually called the first book is called a touch of darkness by Scarlett St. Clair and I will put a cover up of the first book I think the covers are gorgeous they are my colors they're 
kind of floral, kind of dark in there. Um, I read the first book. Uh, this is the story of Hades and Persephone and how they meet and Hades being the king of the underworld, brother to Zeus, brother to Poseidon, and Persephone who is the goddess of spring and how they meet and how they fall in love and all that goes along with that and how Hades tricks Persephone into a game of chance and she ends up having to try and grow things in the underworld. That's kind of how everything starts, how their relationship starts. And it was just the right amount of fun. <laughs> so uh, it was also incredibly smutty. Uh, and I was just ready for it. I wanted to read it. It's what my brain wanted after I came back from camping and I was trying to read on the road, which you know, wasn't necessarily my favorite, which you'll hear about coming up in a video. Uh, so this was everything my brain wanted to read. I loved it so much that I read the second and the third books in the series over like a three day period. I just could not put them down. I was there for all of the explicitness that was in this book, all of that as well. It was, you know, it was perfect maybe for Garb August. I will say that, that, you know, this is definitely the brain candy kind of book for me. The things that I am drawn to when I just want to read something fun. And this met that uh, for sure. And there was, you know, some death in it. There was some, you know, just war back and forth. Uh, Persephone's mom is causing all kinds of problems, uh, which I think her name is Demeter. I think that I'm not sure about all of the relationships in there, but you know, the gods are, or the people, the humans are aware of the gods. And so, and you are, they interact with them on a fairly regular basis. And they're part of like tabloids and things like that in these books. And so it was just a lot of fun. It was completely silly, but I did end up reading all three of those. And there's a fourth book that's coming out in January of 2023. And of course, I now will read that. So sometimes if I get sucked into a series that is just that, that like the uh, In Death series by J.D. Robb, I will read all of them up to a point. So I had read the Stephanie Plum series and then at some point it got so repetitive and Stephanie just never really grew up that I was like, mm, I can't just, I'm done with that. But this one, they're moving along, relationship is moving along. And so it was just them learning each other and learning about different gods like Apollo and Hermes. And it, it was just a lot of fun. Yes, that is what I ended up reading in August, actually far more than I had anticipated reading. If I had read Lessons in Chemistry, I would have considered it a huge success this month. I also read book two in Kristen Labrin's Datter in August. Uh, I was successfully able to do that, uh, which is great. I'm on track to finish that book in September, which has been a fantastic buddy read with my friend uh, Sonia. So yeah, a really great reading month with some unexpected books in it and, you know, a new series that just sucked me in. I know. Uh, so that's my August reading wrap up. Pretty happy with how it ended up turning out. Like I said, not a huge number of books, but a lot of fun. A lot of fun. A couple good buddy reads. Uh, it's a great read along. It just absolutely wonderful, uh, wonderful reading month and with a vacation in there. Yeah, I feel reset. I feel rejuvenated. I feel ready. Like, let's go booktube. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Um, but as always, like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, everyone, thanks. Bye.